still takes 45 seconds for Pixar and Disney's logos to jerk each other off. This is Agent Leland Turbo. Pixar takes the Doc Hollywood-style story of Cars and makes the sequel a spy movie. Like it's f***ing James Bond. I'm sure on paper it sounds really shitty, but sometimes you have to make an entire movie to figure that out. This is Pixar, so I'm sure these coordinates are accurate for some place in the Pacific Ocean. But who cares the latitude and longitude? I haven't had to care about that since I aced my fifth grade geography class and forgot all about it. Okay, fine. He found a way to sneak over to the other ship when no one was looking. The problem is, the ship he's hanging on to is alive and probably has feelings and shit. So how does he hook on to another sentient vehicle's flesh without that guy knowing? Ben, please respond. Over. Movie also airs and spending way too many opening minutes on characters we don't know. Headlight-based zoom and enhance cliche. Guys, these crates aren't gonna unload themselves. Although we are living in a world where if the crates did unload themselves, we wouldn't bat an eye. Even if you could do this, why would you do this? You had a perfect look into what this operation was and got crystal clear audio. The only reason you do this is so you can get caught for movie purposes. Two tons of bull here, folks. Two tons of bull See, why does this car fall to absolute pieces upon hitting the water, but the pieces still maintain their basic body shape? If every car on this rig was following him up the ramp that just exploded, then how are there any cars up here at the top ready to chase after him? About a minute ago, we just saw a car explode from the surface tension. So how does Finn survive an even higher jump? Is it because of his Greg Luganis-style form as he enters the water? Because I'm pretty sure the surface tension doesn't give a shit about your four Olympic gold medals. Here's a car operating a gun on board a boat. And again, I raise my concerns about how this fucking vehicle society works. Why is a car sentient enough to fire a boat gun, but the boat itself is not? Finn's got all the cool spy gadgets, and that comes with the territory in spy movies. But if he could do this, why did he need to hitch a ride on a boat? He could have gone completely stealth mode underwater all the way up to the rig. Who can stop us now? Mater! Toe Mater! That's who! That moment when you realize Mater is the sequel's main character instead of Lightning. I thought I could make it this time. How do cars that break down in the middle of the desert call for help? Advantage humans, assholes. Because when our cars break down, we still have legs and sometimes phones. This is your 10th tow this month, so that means it's on the house. What kind of ass face tow company has a rewards policy where your 10th tow in a month is free? Literally no one in the entire US gets towed 10 times a month, except characters written by a screenwriter. Mater is a dick. Is Lightning McQueen back yet? Movie literally imitates conversations between children and their parents almost nine minutes into this car sequel. You must be crazy excited about winning his fourth Piston Cup! Expositional towing! McQueen! Mater is as excited as a puppy to see McQueen, to the point he's about to kill the guy he's towing. Mater, it's so good to see you. You too, buddy. Speak for yourselves. I can't believe they renamed the Piston Cup after our very own dog cuts. How is this new? Doesn't everybody watch the Piston Cup? Certainly this town would follow lightning and get word that they renamed the cup in Doc's honor, since he's from here. Look, I know Paul Newman died a couple years after Cars, but how did his character die? That motherfucker was in tip-top shape. If this asshole Otis can keep driving around and breaking down on the side of the road, surely Doc could do better than that. I feel like they could say he moved to some faraway island to get the same effect. He train crashed! <laughs> We find out this is some dickhead playing a practical joke, but that means this asshole's been sitting here in the tunnel on the off chance cars are driving down the tracks. Tireless Mater and Lightning film a recruiting commercial for the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things. This car offshoot of cow tipping raises more questions than it answers. Like, why is a sentient vehicle out in the pasture sleeping like an animal? Also, what the fuck is a machine this big doing out in this bum tiny ass town full of nothing? The Incredimobiles is probably ten times better than this movie. Mater is officially the cable guy level of creepy, showing up to Lightning and Sally's date as a waiter. And yes, I know he's being played by Larry the Cable Guy, but I'm the Jim Carrey character. Pun not intended. To show the world what his new super fuel can do, he's created a racing competition like no other. And what? Why not just scientifically demonstrate your fuel's benefits on a YouTube video? You definitely don't need to host a car race. And how will all these competitors be able to run on your new fuel without having advanced time to test it and see how their engine reacts? You're bringing Mater, right? You never bring him to any of your races. That's racist. Let me see if I have this right. Lightning is chilling on vacation at home, but some open wheel race bitch brags on Lightning, and Mater just happens to be watching, so he calls in to challenge that ragging dude. Lightning comes to see what the fuss is about, sees his friend getting dissed on TV, and then agrees to a road course race challenge out of pure defense of Mater, and no concept of the race itself. And that's how this movie kicks its main plot into gear? I mean, Maybe I think I'm lucky. Using a car song for this montage is a little too on the nose. The cars rule, the cars movies do not. Let's not confuse the two for younger generations. Also, this is a relationship song, or likely a breakup song, wherein the singer says all I want is you to a girl or boy he's in love with. But this is a travel montage, making the song choice even more confusing. Oh, and by the way, the same band has a song called Drive, FYI. Maybe I'm just being a dick to cartoons giving me funny details while I watch a travel montage, but what the f*** does Mater need with a travel pillow? Everyone on this plane is asleep except Lightning and Mater, and they're awake because they're watching Japanese Ninja Warrior for cars, I guess? This movie is so f***ing offensively terrible, Jesus. Lightning McQueen is on a giant billboard here, but no one recognizes him driving the common streets among the normals. In fact, here's Lightning McQueen in a store dedicated to merchandise about him, yet he is still unmobbed. 
Check out that tow truck. Man, I wonder who that guy's with. Uh, Cars 2 is seriously about to try and wring emotional conflict out of Lightning being embarrassed by Mater's hickness, which not only did the first movie cover, but is also a bit of a cliche storyline anyway. Excuse me, can I get a picture with you? Uh, Mater suddenly wants to be friends with the asshole he just yelled at on national TV for the disrespect towards his best friend. Is this his character? I think as annoying as he is, this is not something he would do. Hey, look, it's that spy car from the opening, about whom I remember nothing. Sitting on the biggest oil reserve in the world. How did we miss that? They've been scrambling everyone's satellites. The <laughs> oh! American is here tonight to pass it to you. Why would some important spy be happening here, in the preamble to the big race? Why isn't this exchange happening somewhere that's secluded? Is it so there will be a hilarious mix-up with Mater, where he becomes relevant to the story? Those thugs down there were on the oil platform. If they see me, the whole mission is compromised. No, no. Even further reason why no top-secret exchanges would be happening in public places like this. Ah, he's a little excited, isn't he? Pee joke. How Shrek of you, Pixar sequel. Straight from a wasabi misunderstanding joke into a pee joke. I refuse to believe Hong Kong's bathroom door symbols for gender are this vague. This is just more manufactured confusion to create Mater hilariousness. This movie seriously aired on what it thought people might have enjoyed about the first one. Like, super hard aired. <laughs> How could he possibly have seen that would lead to this reaction? Everyone is driving around this place naked. I'm again left wondering why a car in disguise needs to get out of disguise for any reason ever. Especially for something like this. Mater is oblivious to this battle because he's been sidetracked by his first b b day experience. Whatever you do, I would not go in there. Mater takes a second to pay homage to Ace Ventura. When she starts giggling, prepare to be squirted. This is the exact same thing that happened to me the last time I visited a porn set. A Volkswagen Common Gear has no radiator. Well, of course it doesn't. That's because it's air cool. <sighs> yep. The spies came up with passphrases that are easily answered by anyone with knowledge of cars. Could find somewhere more private. Uh, yeah, no sh Cars 2 makes spying look even harder than it already is. Why do you have HD video surveillance of basically everywhere but no audio? Which would tell you that Mater is not the second agent you have mistaken him for. Also, I saw the man who knew too little, and I'm looking down at you for basically doing a car-based ripoff of that movie. All in all, making its debut tonight is the required fuel. Again, and I do think this is worth sitting twice. How do you force cars to race on your new fuel without giving them time beforehand to test it out? Somehow, the two most drummed up participants in this race, Lightning and Francesco, are both starting the race in the very last two spots at the back of the pack. Why were they so favored if they pulled so poorly as to be last at the starting line? How the f is there a camera in front of Lightning McQueen that is faster than him in order to record this sh why is he in the pits? He's so exposed. It's, it's amazing to me that these spies who were just seen hanging out in public suddenly give a sh about where other spies are hanging out. Clean the than a roll bar in a demolition derby. This analogy is stupid. Why would a roll bar, an inanimate object, be excited about the prospect of being repeatedly put to the test? Even when protecting a human, a roll bar is going to suffer during a car crash, right? Pain, dents, scratches. Mostly I just think this is a super lazy car based analogy, and I wanted to call it out. The EMPs work on electronic devices and equipment, yet this movie will suggest the gasoline in these cars somehow reacts negatively to the EMP, as though there is electronics inside the gasoline, when really an EMP would stop a car regardless of fuel, because modern cars are all electronically controlled. So this fuel additive of death is just pointless and stupid, much like this entire sequel. Get out now! Well, I usually like to have a proper detailing done before I meet a lady friend. Somehow, Mater is coaxed into getting out of the pits just because this beautiful lady car begs him to do it. And yeah, the power of car boners is probably strong, but enough to get Mater away from his best friend's race that he's leading and is almost over? But I know that Finn is a high priority target for the bad guys, but they are specifically looking for Mater right now. He's the one with the thing that they need. So why is the entire bad guy crew going after Finn? You want me to head toward that ruckus? No! Don't go down that street! Mater, who's been thinking with his car dick this entire time, decides not to follow Shiftwell's instructions in this instance. I've karate demonstrate. Mater's stupidity is kind of a liability for this movie. It works in small doses, but this is cringeworthy and generally insulting. I lost the race because of you! We're supposed to believe that Lightning learned his lesson from the first movie so well that he's repeated as Piston Cup champion four times, but he's just as dickish in this movie as he was in the last one. He was barely redeemable in the first cars. Now he's maybe worse. I don't need your help! I don't want your help! Movie rips off the telling off of Encino Man from Encino Man, which basically ripped off the shooting of Old Yeller from Old Yeller, which basically ripped off the Abraham Isaac story from the Bible, which basically... Finn Mac Missile, British Intelligence. Co Mater, Average Intelligence. Mater grossly overstates his intelligence. Also, Mater mistakenly believes British folk, in general, have a high intelligence. Though, in his defense, this was a decade or more before the Brexit vote. Who are you with, FBI, CIA? Let's just say I'm AAA affiliated. Seriously, if Mater were even a tiny bit not dumb, this movie couldn't exist. Though, in his defense, the British intelligence agents in this movie are basically just as much to blame, since they actually think Mater is a secret agent most of the film. I know some karate. I don't want to brag or nothing, but I got me a black fan belt. <sighs> Hang on! 
these pursuing cars grunt instead of, you know, jumping out the window and following these assholes. Like Cap and Winter Soldier on the rooftop. Oh, he jumped! Guess I'm f***ed then, oh well. When Pixar resorts to jokes, you know something went wrong. This plane takes off despite a flat rear tire. And while I'm guessing that may be possible in real life, this movie showed me the plane veering wildly to the side after the tire blew. So how did the pilot hold it steady after that to actually take off? And how's he gonna land? I didn't really want him to leave. <laughs> yes, you did. End of sin. Good agent gets what he can, then gets out before he's killed. Sorry. Why didn't the secret agent write down some extra details if he could only take one picture? A good, good neighbor, Mater is there. How much did State Farm pay for this? On the one hand, it's their jingle, and forever tied to them. On the other hand, he actually sang Mater instead of State Farm. So my point is State Farm might actually have tried to stop this mention, as opposed to sponsoring it, since it doesn't exactly make them look good or bad. Ain't exactly been much help to anybody recently. You're helping me, please, Mater. This movie is a long-awaited collaboration between Michael Caine and Larry the Cable Guy. I guess planes are pigeons now. I've sort of lost track of what's supposed to be intelligent life and mere livestock in this movie. Mater, get back! An imbecile. Does this guy have f***ing binocular vision? One involved in this plot is one of history's biggest loser cars. That's car system. A secret meeting in two days. Where's this meeting taking place? Porto Corsa, Italy. That's where the next race is. Then the Gee, I wonder what car absolutely needs to be in the location of every race. And we've seen his dubious backstory. And is trying to sell all in all. Could it be Axelrod? Dents are valuable. Really? I come by each one of them with my best friend, Lightning McQueen. Holy sh this movie just became the most strictly bullshit imaginable. You don't buff out the dents caused by your time with Lightning McQueen. Are we sure this movie's plot was propelled by Mater's attraction to a female car? Because it sounds like Mater's more in love with McQueen. Also, I think the alternate, more believable plot to this movie would be called E2 Mater Tambien. McQueen isn't just part of your cover. Friendships can be dangerous in our line of work, Mater. Michael Caine cuts her off before Mater has a chance to ask what she means by cover. <laughs> Honestly, how many car races does the Pope even go to? I like how every now and then the film cuts back to lightning, letting us believe he's still a main character, even though he clearly is not. Number Every single joke in this movie is some sort of car-related replacement for whatever humans use in this world. Stop manufacturers. Stop making our parts. This entire world has already explained or implied that men and women cars get busy and have children, unless this now implies that they don't. So do couples who want children need them to be built? And if so, is there some sort of pricing where couples would want gremlins and pacers because they're the cheapest children to buy? It just happened. I'm working on it. You're working on what? The fact that a heavily favored car just wrecked? Can you not actually see through those things? It was meant to be alternative fuel's greatest moment. After today, everyone will race back to gasoline. Let's talk about the villain's plan. The villain definitely being Axelrod. So his whole plan is to make an alternative fuel that would replace gasoline, but create a flaw by which it fails publicly so that everyone will go back to gasoline, of which he owns a lot. But why do this? If everyone was already using gasoline, wouldn't they buy your oil anyway? Or are there many different kinds of alternative fuel out there besides all in all? And he's hoping that its failure will be a black eye for all alternative fuels. But that doesn't make sense either, since the other fuels aren't exploding. Finn did not see, and more importantly did not hear, a helicopter anywhere near the area before trying to jump over. Letting you choose your fuel for the final race, do you have any idea what it's gonna be? All in all. What? Well, that's just fucking stupid. Look, we know what's going on here, but they don't. All they know is that cars are exploding for a reason that could only be all in all. These assholes all pull guns on Mater, but then give him time to Mater. I mean that kind of shoe. Correction acknowledged. Deploying shoes. Whoa! Mater is just going to keep accidentally himself through this entire movie. And it's like I'm supposed to be all happy because he's wearing a backpack. I said you killed out there today. You're the okay, so we're supposed to believe that before Lightning could get through the crowd, the bad guys grabbed Mater and replaced him with this evil lookalike guy. And if that were the case, then some of these folks near him would have seen that and would speak up. This one here on the right has a goddamn camera. The bad guys gas Mater instead of killing him because they too have a great stake in the toy line Cars Inspires. Way too much of the gas-induced Mater hallucination. This is some maniacal shit right here. Tying a man to a- Wait a second. How the f did cars get up here to even tie him into place? This movie gives me a rage boner, and I'm gonna f hard. London Mater, inside Big Bentley. Big Bentley. Glamour shot of Big Bentley. Say, why did the f***ing car society build all the same shit we have here in our real human society? Okay, f*** you, movie. When Mater awoke from his gas nightmare, these two were this close to being smashed by the next gear change. But now you want the gears to move and end up with them even further away than where they started. This is computer animation, f***ers. You don't actually have to accept continuity errors. You created them and have the power to fix them. These motherfuckers move another slot closer and yet still are a full slot away from being crushed. Listen, this movie is terrible in pretty much every way. But the single most terrible aspect is this gear moving f***ery without question. Makes me want to kill. I probably shouldn't be saying this at all, but... 
I hope you win today. Movie thinks that if it makes Axelrod say this, we'll believe he's not the bad guy. And I'm telling you right now, you had no chance in hell, movie. EMP suddenly doesn't work because God hates all of us. And yes, I know what the movie tells us about McQueen's fuel later that totally explains this, I just don't care. The previously tested and working laser ray to f with cars running on all in all doesn't work as expected, so they call in plan B, which is super sudden and also a f***ing bomb planted in McQueen's pit, which is a way better method of killing him than some kind of laser ray anyway. Did you know she had twin batarangs in her front tires? Because I definitely did not know that. Listen to me! The bomb is on you! They somehow knew that Mater would be able to get out of these ropes by activating his machine guns. Come the f*** on. They so did not. Why not have a bomb in the pit and a bomb on Mater? Who that truck is, Brent, but I tell you what, he's- Yes, you do know who that tow truck is, because he was seen with McQueen everywhere before the first race, and he's the reason why McQueen is racing in the first place, because he called into that show. You mean to tell me there wasn't a story about that and numerous pictures of McQueen's best friend? Also, Mater, a tow truck, is outrunning Lightning McQueen, who is Lightning. I'm the bomb! Yes, Mater, you are the bomb! Entire movie is built around repeated asinine misunderstandings, and it makes me want to kill something in anger, like a plant or a beetle. Nothing cute and lovable, obviously, but still, angry enough to kill! <laughs> movie is sadly overestimating my love of Mater and McQueen in this series of close calls. What is happening? Movie speaks for the audience and does so expertly. Queen, let go! Never! Even more of this story. What do we do? It's very simple. You'll blow up. Does lightning blowing up still somehow work for the bad guys at this point? How would no one know what happened? How does this get blamed on all in all? Coming powerful and rich beyond your wildest dreams ain't gonna make you feel better. Citation needed. Yep, that's just ordinary water, somehow knocking the bad guys a hundred feet back. Yeah, it's coming from a fire truck, and it's probably strong, but we're talking about cars that weigh a ton. <laughs> Mater foo. Damn. What? You're leaking oil at the party in Japan. You Keep in mind, this bomb had three minutes to go just before they kicked the bad guys' asses. I know it's a cartoon, and this is what spy movies do, but it's still infuriating. Why not just give him extra time so that all the stuff they do in three minutes doesn't seem impossible? He created all in all. Yeah, but what if he found that huge oil field just as the world was trying to find something else? What? This brings us to the flip side of the plan. If all in all is such a good product, why can't he get rich selling that? Clearly he can sell all in all and nobody gives a f that it's actually gasoline in disguise. It's like he's worried that if he sold all in all for real, he'd be discovered as a fraud. But isn't he risking that very thing right now? Is nobody testing this fuel? He's crazy! Keep away, you idiot! Beta! Deactivate! Bomb deactivated. Why would you make it so that this bomb could be deactivated using only your voice? If you think there's a scenario by which you would need to deactivate the bomb, which is unlikely, why wouldn't you think of how it incriminates you? It's official. You're coming to all my races from now on. Gee, you're such a great guy, McQueen. I can't f***ing wait for Cars 3 now, where you're probably a dick again for some unknown reason. Mater f***ing with stoic British guards is everything I hope this movie wouldn't be. I'm Mater's girlfriend. Oh, you are not. Investigation proved that all in all was actually gasoline. Okay, so maybe this explains all the bullshit about the plant. But how does a new product get introduced like this without people finding out it's gasoline in the first place? The plant is still stupid, despite this revelation. Just sell f***ing gas, man. It still doesn't explain how all in all would be the end of all alternative fuels forever, either. People would just blame all in all, and not the entire industry, right? Why did it take me so long to realize this movie's Francesco is just a discount Jean Girard from Talladega Nights? I'm the bomb! 472 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor, Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski is on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Anyone need any more vino? He's a little excited, isn't he? Oh, you guys made me eat! Guns. Lots of guns. I am a French. You say you're French? Full of them at the house, for God's sake. I bet I'm sitting on fifteen, two hundred dollars worth of undershorts. You don't really need to work it out. You want to be fooled.